Hello and welcome to part 5 of Blender 2.6, The Basics. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to create custom shapes. Now, in the third part of this video series, we created a simple snowman using primitive separate shapes like UV spheres and icospheres and cones and cylinders to create the snowman's body. But obviously, we want to be able to create custom shapes that's done in the process called modeling. Modeling in Blender is done in a special mode called Edit Mode, which lets you take a basic mesh and create it into any object that you like. To get into Edit Mode in Blender, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on my splash screen to get rid of it. Edit Mode is a mode that's only available to meshes in our scene. So right now I have three objects in my world. I have a camera, a lamp, and a cube. And meshes are really solid objects. They're the objects that we can edit and access the subcomponents of, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Of course, when we made our snowman, we went up to the add menu and the mesh sub menu and everything in here, planes, cubes, circles are a little bit different. They're just a flat object. We're not gonna get into those in this video series. Uh, UV spheres work, icospheres, cylinders, cones. Um, grids are kind of a funny one as well. Monkeys and tortoises. Any of those will work with this, but we should start off with a default cube. To get into edit mode of a mesh, you press tab. And what tab does is it switches you from object mode into edit mode. And of course I can use this menu if I like, but I'm a keyboard shortcut junkie. So let's keep on using those keyboard shortcuts. So I'll press tab with that cube selected and that changes us into edit mode where I can now access the components of a mesh. A mesh has three components. A mesh has faces, in other words, polygons that are the flat sides that make up the object. Meshes also have edges, which are the dividing lines between two faces. And meshes also have vertexes or vertices, which are the dots that connect any two or more edges. To access these three subcomponents, or the three components of any mesh, there, is, there are three new buttons on the header or the bottom bar of your 3D viewport down here. They switch between the different selection modes, which are the vertex select mode, the edge select mode, and the face select mode. So now I can select any of those three things. By default, right now I'm in the vertex select mode, so I can right click on any vertex to select it. And of course, just like in object mode, when you have something selected, it has the gizmo at that location. So now I can use the gizmo to move, rotate, or scale any of these components. Now it should be noted that you cannot scale a vertex and you cannot rotate a vertex either. So if I go into the scale gizmo, I cannot scale a vertex because it's only a coordinate, one single little point in 3D space. Let's go into face select mode though and select any face by right clicking on it. Of course, I can use the move gizmo to move it. I can use the rotate gizmo to rotate it in any way that I like. And I can use the scale gizmo to make it smaller in any of the three directions. Of course, if you have a face that's exactly flat, uh, I cannot make it thinner or smaller on the Z axis because it's only one, it's not even, it doesn't have any depth. Let's go ahead and go up to File and New and Reload Startup File to get our default cube again. Now I'll go and press Tab to go back into Edit Mode. Let's take a look at this cube. It has six sides, of course, because it's a normal cube. It has 12 edges, so if I go into edge select mode, I can count those up. By the way, if you start into edit mode uh, by default, it's going to have everything selected. That means everything's going to be orange. The keyboard shortcut, which I forgot to mention in part one of this video series, that selects or deselects all is the A key. So if I press A, it'll deselect all, and if I press it again, it'll select all. If you have one thing selected and you press A, it'll deselect that. If you have nothing selected, it'll select everything. So that's a very handy keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna go ahead and press A and deselect all. We have 12 edges on this cube, of course, six faces, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertexes. We're limited to those until we learn how to create more geometry or to create or to make any mesh more complex than it already is. Most objects in 3D, especially in 3D video games, start with a cube. That's called box modeling, and we'll talk about that more in the next video. But right now, I'm going to show you how to make um, extensions off of this cube. 
To make extensions off of this cube, the process is called extruding or extrusion. To extrude, I'm going to go ahead and press or go into face select mode, and you'll notice that there are little squares now on all the faces. To extrude is to take any face and to make an extension off of that face. In other words, if this was our simple little house and we wish to now construct a garage on the side of that house, um, that would be extrusion. So I'm going to go ahead and select this side face of the cube and press E to extrude it. And now that I've tapped E, I need to move my mouse away from that side. And now I've extruded um, that side of the cube. To make the extrusion permanent, I need to left click. And now I have a more complex mesh. I now have, instead of um, six faces, I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten faces instead of the default six. It's important to know, I'm going to go ahead and press Z to go into wireframe view. It's important to know that there is no face now running through the middle of my cube. That face that I originally extruded is now replaced by the extension. So it's important to know that internal geometry it does not still exist after you extrude. In fact, internal geometry, in other words, a face cutting through an object, would actually be bad in most cases. So I'm going to go ahead and press Z to go back into solid view, and we'll keep on extruding. So I can select any face that I like and press E. I can keep going up or make it very short. It's important to know that when you press E, don't click right away, because what I've just done is I pressed E and I clicked, and now there are dots where my edges are, and that's really because there are there's really extra faces in there. If you press E and then click right away, and you see dots on your edges, that's bad. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that, and you should too if that ever happens to you. Keep pressing Control or Command Z until they go away. If I press E and then I press Escape, that'll also happen. So now I have bad geometry. I should press Command or Control Z to undo or keep on going until that uh, those dots disappear. You don't want internal geometry that'll mess you up in the future. You want to keep your geometry as controlled uh, as you possibly can. So I'll press E and keep going. Maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. E, E. Maybe I'll go out this way. E, E. Now. The basic or simple mistake that most beginners do is they extrude looking at their object or their face straight on. If I press E right now, of course I can extrude, but it's really hard for me to see how far I am extruding right now. So if I click, I can't really tell how much that new section sticks out. So it's a better idea, see it's very far, so I'm going to control Z that. It's a better idea to, to orbit in your scene so that you're looking at your um, extruded or the area where you want to extrude uh, from the side or from some angular view. Let's go ahead and press E a few more times. Now what I could do, I believe this is my default cube down here, if you want to extrude by a very specific amount, you can. Actually what I'll do is I'll go back to the original scene and I'll go into edit mode and my face select mode. This default cube has a very specific size in Blender. It's two Blender units by two Blender units by two Blender units. Every Blender unit is one of these squares um, on the kind of default ground plane in Blender. And a Blender unit is basically considered to be equivalent to one meter. Uh, and that's because of the physics simulator in Blender. That's how it calculates it. So um, we just kind of go by that in the Blender world. To extrude by a certain amount, you can still press E but then if you press a number after that, it'll extrude by that many Blender units. Of course, the, the default cube is 2 by 2 by 2. So if I press E and then 2, I'll press Escape and start that again. E and then 2 and then Enter, it'll make a second cube attached to the original cube. I can keep going. E, 2, Enter. E, 2, Enter. And of course, I could keep on going. If I want to make a shorter extrusion, of course I can press E, 0 0.5, or any number that I like. It's always going to extrude perpendicular from your original face, so you're never going to extrude out diagonally. Of course, if I extrude and then click, I'm then free to move that face that is the extruded new face. That's totally okay. This extrusion process is a really good way to make a very simple character, or the start of a very complex character. So I'm going to go back to my original scene. So I'll go to File, New, and Reload Startup File. 
I'm going to make a very simple block or Minecraft dinosaur. To make my dinosaur, I'm going to go into edit mode and go into face select mode within that. And we're going to extrude out a body for the dinosaur and then a neck and head and then four legs and four feet. So I'm going to select just one side uh, face and then I'll press E2, enter, E2, enter. Maybe I should turn on my screencast key so you can see what I'm pressing down here. And I'll make those a little bit bigger. Um, let's say 64, sure. There. So now I have three uh, cubes kind of attached in a row. I'm going to now select these three faces. So I'll hold shift now and right click to select them. When you extrude many faces at the same time and they're all next to each other, it's important to know that now by default, if you press E and 2 or just E and then move it out and click, in my case I'll press E to enter, um, there's no internal geometry sticking in between these three cubes. If I wanted to do that, I could. I believe it is uh, Alt E and then I could select extrude individual faces and what that means, and I'll press 2 and enter again, what extrude with Alt E, extrude individual faces means, is that now I have uh, internal geometry. There's now actually two faces running in the middle of uh, uh, each of those, in between each of those cubes. So be wary that you don't have any internal geometry. I'm going to undo that with Control Z a few times and uh, maybe I'll redo this. E2, enter, E2, enter. Great. We have a 3x3 three by, three by one body for my dinosaur. And now I'll extrude a neck. So this is where my neck is going to extrude from. E, maybe I'll keep going. E2, maybe E4. And then I'll extrude up again. E, I'm not going to measure from now on. I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, and we'll extrude out a nose or a kind of a mouth section. So E, there we go. Uh, let's extrude out some legs. So I can extrude out uh, separate faces if I want, especially if they're all in the same direction. But if I accidentally had a face like up here selected and I didn't know about, that, know about it, and I extrude it downwards, of course it's going to make a hole in the top of my dinosaur. So again, I'm going to select just the ones I want and not look at it like that because it makes it hard to, to uh, tell. So I'll press E, move these down. We want some feet as well, so I'll extrude a little bit more down. And now if I select these front faces, I can extrude out um, some little feet. And let's make a tail. And now we have kind of our Minecraft dinosaur. This is the basics of really primitive box modeling. One more step up from this though is using the loop cut tool or subdividing up your your faces right now I really have a really basic dinosaur shape but obviously if I wanted to make this into a smooth photorealistic dinosaur you would have to add a lot more geometry it's a good idea to start with a very simple shape when you're modeling and then make it more and more complex and the loop cut tool is a really good way uh, to do that to use the loop cut tool I'm gonna press control R while I'm in edit mode and what control R does is it puts a pink or purple line around your mesh wherever you put your mouse. If I put my mouse over an edge, it'll make a, a pink or purple line around that edge and around the entire mesh. And where this pink or purple line is gonna, or what it's gonna do is it's going to make a cut or new edges wherever I decide to do that cut. So I'm gonna put my, my uh, mouse over one of these up and down edges and it's gonna cut all the way around uh, the dinosaur and the tail. And I'm going to click, and when I click, it kind of makes it sem semi-permanent. It allows me to choose where that cut is going to be uh, along that edge. If I want it off to the side, I can just click right there, or click anywhere. But if I want it exactly in the middle, I can right-click, and that's going to snap the cut and make it permanent right in the middle. So again, it's Control r to loop cut, and then move my mouse around until I'm happy, and then click, and then right-click to put it in the middle. Now I have all these new edges that I can use to make my object more rounded. So what I might do is I might take these top edges now and I might move them in a little bit and down a little bit to make my, my dinosaur side a little bit more rounded. Let's select these ones as well. Oops. 
and let's move them in and down. This is where the front view or the side view, probably the front view, would be a good use. So I can see that I got these two approximately the same. I can take these two edges inward a little bit. B, I can take these outward a little bit and these ones in a little bit. Now, of course, I'm going pretty fast here, but hopefully you can figure this out on your own. Let's go ahead and make his neck a little bit rounder. So I'm going to do a Control R again to do a loop cut. Uh, maybe I'll make a cut there as well, just because. Uh, I'll do a Control R around his entire uh, side and then right click. And now I can take these three edges on the side of his neck and make it a little bit rounder. Let's go and the same thing on the other side and move them out a little bit. Let's do the same thing around the back in front of his neck and around his nose. And so obviously I could keep going. I might want to select all these edges on the back of his neck and head and move them out on the front of his neck and head, move them out, take the ones in the corners and move them in and the side. And of course I could really spend a long time doing this, but I'm not gonna uh, kind of bore you with this process. In the next video, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth into box modeling. We're gonna show you some of the more, um, more of the tools that you can use while you're in edit mode. And we're gonna create a person and a person's head in part six. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.